Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Last time we got three different accounts of the SL9 incident. And, uh, yeah, we decided that we're gonna go ahead and investigate the police chief's office, which is where the scene of the final murder took place. The murder of Officer Jake Marshall's brother, prosecuting attorney Neil Marshall. Let's go. Oh yeah, and it just so happened that on the day that he was murdered, Neil Marshall won the same award that Edgeworth won. The King of Prosecutors Award. Oh yes, it's true. Anyway, this is the police chief's department. Wait. That that was that was that was bad. No, this is the police no god damn it. This is the chief the police chief's office. God, just whatever. Let, let's go. Look at that pipe organ, though. Wish my office had a pipe organ. Whoa, where am I? In the chief's office, silly. At least that's what it said on the door. Check out that pipe organ. That's real, isn't it? Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. What kindergarten did you go to? They used to call me Little Miss Bach. What kindergarten did you go to? I thought I was a genius until they tried teaching me notes. I never could remember where C was. Hmm. Oh, it's you two. Chief Gant. He put that paper he was reading in his desk. So, Mr. Wright, have you been swimming lately? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I've had my hands full, too, with Mr. Marshall's misconduct. And Lana's provocative statement. Provocative statement? Oh, you mean about the forged evidence? Two years have passed since that incident. My, how time flies. See that big picture on the wall over there? That's a picture of Lana, Neil, and me. So this is Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. We took it to commemorate our work together. Something's not right with this picture. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it though. Gant team picture added to the court record. Give him some time. Give him some time. Anyway, I'd like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm going to lock up here, so let's go out together. Oh, but this office. It was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has long since been over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. All the same, we'd still like to have a look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said there's no need to investigate it anymore. Now hurry up and get out, I have a meeting to attend. Looks like we aren't welcome. It seems that case isn't over with yet, after all. What do you mean? Chief Gant denied our request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean like, a clue? There's got to be a way we can get inside the chief's office. All righty then. But where do we go? Criminal affairs? Apparently. Hey pal, Detective Gumshoe. Were you in a meeting? I was uh just taking a breather. My feet hurt. From sitting so long in the meeting? Actually, I had to serve everyone coffee. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe's still out of the loop. Say, if you of you see Mr. Edgeworth. Edgeworth? No, why do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battles between you two in court. That sounds serious. Is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it all boils down to. That falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Yikes. All right, well, let's talk to you, pal, about Edgeworth's crisis. But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Lana Skye is the guilty party here, isn't she? Regardless, the prosecutor is responsible for the evidence he presents in court. Not only that, but as you know, there have been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. Those who don't like him haven't been able to do anything because of his... 
amazing talent as a prosecutor. But now with this, are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only had that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know of for making enemies. Hey, Dick! Keep up the gut work! Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just... <laughs> I'm shocked I said that with a straight face. <laughs> hey, Dick. All right. I mean, I know it's his name, but still. Come on now, I'm 12 years old. All right. Let's go out for lunch again sometime. My treat. Yes, sir. You gotta take me back to that joint sometime, okay, dick? Yes, sir. Seems you don't have any problems with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth just might crack. Okay, but I mean, you know, like he said that it is the prosecutor's, um, like, responsibility to check all evidence. I mean, yeah? You can't get Edgeworth off the hook for that. He should have double-checked all the evidence that he received, and we saw, you know, the whole Meekins incident, where Meekins was bringing him information about the murder in the police department, and Edgeworth was like, get out of my sight, you measly little man. And, you know, he kind of just, you know, threw that evidence away. So yeah. Anyway, how about the SL9 incident, pal? Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. He seems genuinely concerned for Edgeworth. Well, did you find out anything? The only evidence Dark left behind was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean, when he killed Prosecutor Marshall who was trying to protect some girl? Me. It seems Detective Gumshoe never realized Emma was the girl. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what was it? Oh, um, let's see. I think it has something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forget. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? His powers of recollection never fail to impress. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. It might jog his memory. Okay, but first about Dark's crimes. Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. A businessman? What made him take the serial killing? One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So, it was an accident? An accident, yes, but it transformed him into an animal. An animal? He killed a man that witnessed the accident. Then he killed a lady who saw the second crime. A kick walked by just then, so he killed him too. Then when he was burying the bodies, a jogger came up upon the scene and he was killed as well. Finally, he turned himself in. Seems he was a pretty... Oh, seems he was a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. So he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim, Prosecutor Marshall. That crime was witnessed by someone too, but unfortunately he was arrested. Oh, but fortunately, yes, the, yeah, because murder's bad, okay. He was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. That last witness, he must mean Emma. All right, let's jog his memory, but yeah, that's, so it was just like, you know, the snowball effect. You know, he accidentally committed manslaughter. He's like, oh, snap. Uh, this is going to run up the insurance the, the insurance premium on my car, and I might do jail time. I should probably bury him. And then, you know, he, somebody saw him burying him and was like, okay, well, you got to die too. And then somebody witnessed that, like, okay, you got to die as well. And then, yeah. And then, like, when he finally killed, you know, that fifth person, the jogger, he was like, you know what? I have a really big problem. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn myself in. And it's like, oh, wait a minute, this is a bad idea. I'm just gonna run and then, you know, he killed somebody else. Okay. So yeah, here's the murder weapon, pal. I'm about this. Hey, don't tell me that. It's a tag attached to it with the label SO9 incident on it. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker. It was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. That's it! I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to him. Well, what was it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again! <laughs> Alright, yes, let's hurry up before he forgets. Come on. Must hurry! Murder weapon! This knife. It was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? 
That's right. We traced it back to the store he brought it at, and it had his fingerprints on it, too. But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When you take a good look at the knife, you'll see it's broken. You don't have to take a good look to notice that. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway. Take a guess where the broken off tip of the knife was found. That's what did him in. Where was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it. Inside his own body, pal. It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Dark's knife? You bet. Now the last fiber. That's pretty... conclusive. It really is. Neil's autopsy report added to the court record. Which blade knife added to the court record? Well, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If there's money you need, you should ask Chief Gant. It's not money, but it does concern the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The Chief's out now and his office is locked. But we'd like to have a look around if that's okay. Well, a detective's ID card can unlock the door. What? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh. Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. That won't work either. The data was deleted the day he died. Oh. So in other words, Gumshoe is our only chance of getting into that office. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. Alrighty, we shall check to see. But first things first, we got this. Stab in the back, died from a punctured heart and lung, a knife tip was in the wound. Neil Marshall, 27 Mayo, date and time of death, February 19th, between 7 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Single stab wound, piercing heart and lung, died from blood loss in under 10 minutes, weapon found in wound was missing tip. And then the switchblade was updated. Where you at, switchblade? There you is. Broken tip was found in the victim's body belonging to murderer Joe Dark. Okay, so now we need to show him something that would make him change his tune. Do we have anything of Edgeworth's? This? Hey, that's it. That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Mr. Edgeworth got the other day. Were you at the award ceremony, Detective Gumshoe? Of course, pal. I got an award for diligence myself. Ah, congratulations. I was wondering, why is the award a shield? And why is it broken? Oh, there's a reason. Er, I'll tell you what it is later. Apparently he's forgotten. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, his, his pride and joy, the blue baby? The blue baby? <laughs> I play way too much Binding of Isaac. No, blue badger, but no. Uh, victim's note, no. Ed Edgeworth's knife? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth's car, stab with Mr. Edgeworth's knife, huh? Drive cheap for us to the sky to do such a thing. They didn't mean, I mean, sure, of course, someone else really did it. Someone who must have, um, someone who must have a grudge against Mr. Edgeworth. I ain't got nothing to show him. Um, uh, ba ba da ba. I shall return. Because there's one other place that we didn't go to. I don't know if we'll be able to go to it, though. It won't hurt to try. Yes, the High Prosecutor's Office. Let's talk to Edgy, shall we? I wonder if Edgeworth is back yet. There he is. It looks like he's writing something. Huh? What are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Tough day in court, huh? Humph. <laughs> I've had to live the past two years with rumors flying around. What's another allegation to me? Cheer up, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm rooting for you. That's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. So what do you want? Like some people, I don't have all day. All right, well, let's talk, buddy. It's about forged evidence, yo. There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I can do... Oh, nothing I do can erase that fact. But you didn't know, did you? 
I mean that the evidence was falsified. Police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. Police department's error is my error. My responsibility as the prosecutor in charge. That fact remains the same no matter what excuses I might have. Mr. Edgeworth. I take pride in my work. So tell me why. Why has it all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. About tomorrow's trial, boy. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? Hmph. <laughs> First last year's trial, now this one. Seems all you do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. But Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on the trial. Tomorrow's the last day, it's too late to change prosecutors. I bet that's what my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? That list of evidence, it seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists? Oh, it's only half as long as most lists? That is odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but at the time there was only one thing on my mind. I'd use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. Say, we just saw a picture taken around that time. That picture? Something seems strange about it. Okay, I'll show him that picture too, but okay. Could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered? You were participating in a ceremony over at the station, right? I never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this? Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. I finished up at the office in the morning, then drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office? Yes, just odds and ends, clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is, until I was asked to take something back. Take something back? This. Oh yeah, Chief Gant asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes. It was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. That's the story we heard yesterday. So you came back here to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you to? That's right. Hmm. All right, let us present to him the Gamp team picture. This picture was hanging on the wall in Chief Gant's office. Prosecutor Dion Marshall. He had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall was holding. It's a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. I remember now. Remember what? That was the official Prosecutor trophy used until that time. There's a story behind it. A story? Sounds interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. I'm sorry? This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd, and the second means shield. Have you heard this story? Me? Oh, uh, sure. Everyone knows that. Why don't you tell it, though? For Emma's sake. Very well. Long ago in the distant land, I, I could, I'm sorry, wrong, 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 wrong thing, wrong thing. Ahem. Long ago in the kingdom of Chu, there was an arms merchant. One day he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he claimed could withstand any weapon. Hmm. Wait a minute. Those claims contradict each other! Very perceptive. But then again, you've heard the story before, right? Anyway, as you mentioned, the very descriptions of these items discredit them both. When the king pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless. And thus, the Chinese word for a contradiction was born. Oh, I see. So the chipped shield and broken knife symbolize... Precisely so. They symbolize the merchant's items. The ancient tale ends when the merchant had a loss for words, but it's in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion, even if it results in something as ugly as this. Wow, thanks Mr. Edgeworth, I learned something new today. That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? 
You have to ask Chief Gant. Two years ago, he had the Halbert part of the award abolished. Chief Gant. Even prosecutors shall be updated in the court record. Let's examine that real quick, shall we? We're not going to present it to him, but we're just going to examine it. Two years ago, the Halbert was removed at Gant's behest, given in its current form. Okay. So now, the elephant in the room, that is this crumpled piece of paper in the room. What is it? I wonder what he was writing before. Come on, Mr. Wright. Let's take a look. Are you crazy? Edward's standing right there. Just distract him. I'll check it out. Uh, hey, Edward. Is that Detective Gumshoe out the window there? Oh no, he's falling to the ground! Hold on. First, let me see what this girl's doing crawling around my feet. He didn't even look. Dang. So, like, what? If Gumshoe was committing suicide, you just wouldn't even do shit? Dang, Edgeworth. What? Letter of. If you can't read, I'll read it for you. It says Letter of Resignation. Resignation? Edgeworth, you don't mean. I'm tired, Mr. Wright. I feel as if something inside me has died. Mr. Edgeworth, none of it is your fault. I know the path I've walked. You don't need to tell me. And the path I've walked hasn't been a just one. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one else should forgive me either. Uh-oh. I think he's serious. Mr. Wright, please, you have to do something. This letter of resignation. I wonder if I could use it for anything. The letter of resignation in pocket. Well, let's take a look at it, man. Edgeworth's discarded letter of resignation. He's serious. Uh, no, e examine the freaking paper. Due to recent events, I hereby announce my resignation as public prosecutor. He really wrote a resignation letter. Wow, he won't resign. Mr. Edgeworth is cool and concise. So it wasn't his fault. Someone has to be held responsible. That's how it is in the grown-up world. Yeah, but that responsibility means nothing if he just quits. Well, not everyone sees it that way. Truly, take responsibility, you should have to work the rest of your life for no pay. What? No. Sometimes the grown-up world can be tough. Anything on the back? No. Just crumbled paper. Okay. What you got to say to this, dog? They say where there's smoke, there's fire. Apparently, I was so caught up in the smoke, I lost sight of the truth. Edgeworth. The others are right. I have no right to serve as a prosecutor. Mr. Edgeworth, you are only doing your job. I've always made my own decisions about what I can or cannot do. That hasn't changed. Forgiving myself is something I cannot do. Uh-oh. I think he's serious. That's right, please, you have to do something. This letter of resignation. I wonder if I can use it for anything. Uh -oh. Well, I think I know where we can use it. Let's go. But yeah, I mean, all this is to be expected because, whoa, what is going on here? Well, before I got so rudely interrupted by plot development, um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of to be expected because, you know, Von Karma was his mentor and Von Karma was notorious for also getting a guilty verdict by any means necessary. Just saying, but all right. Excuse me. Oh God, it's this. It's... Will either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Miss Star. I guess she's out of lunches. You certainly are the curious sort, aren't you? Kind of like the first person who sucked a cow's nipple to discover milk. That is very graphic. Okay. So I ever thought you'd go digging up that case from two years ago. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SO9 incident. Not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day the evidence from the case was due for transfer. This can't all be attributed to mere coincidence. Aren't you forgetting something? You know that little scene I happened to witness? The instant Lana stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. No matter how much of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Roast beef is meant to be savored when eaten. It stars hatred toward Lana. It all dates back to two years ago. Interesting. So she hates Lana. Uh-huh. Anyway, about that investigation. Joe Dark. That's a name I'll not soon forget. We trailed him for half a year. Oh, the pressure. Still, I don't think I was ever more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. Ew. 
I mean, yeah, like for having half of a family that's like real, real deep Southern, I'm not a fan of gravy. I'm not. Anyway, poor old Jake Marshall, although must have been going through hell. You mean because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made her all the more desperate. Her? Lana Skye. My sister? The best of the best were put on that SO9 case. Of course, they were led by the legendary duo. Well, technically led, but is LED, so that's another. Just ignore that typo. Lana and Chief Gant. All right, well, after the case was closed, that legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we're so shocked over how it turned out. You mean, with the forging of the evidence? Don't get me wrong, Joe Dark got what he deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. Items our team never found would suddenly appear, while others were kept secret. But you didn't have proof anything illegal was done. I'm proof enough of what happened. After that case, all of us save Goodman were relieved of our duties. Most without even so much as an explanation. Then Lana Skye transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Lana always wanted to be a prosecutor. Nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Lana Skye was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. She was being used. Okay, well about this here legendary duo, Foist. Damon Gant and Lana Skye. Two years ago, Gant was chief detective and Lana second in command. They were the best. They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Damon Gant's magnetism in particular was almost unreal. His magnetism? By that I mean his ability to attract evidence. He produced the most incredible evidence in the cases he handled. Incredible evidence? You mean... Oh yes, there were rumors about him even back then. No one dared confront him though. I take it she's talking about forged evidence. Back then everyone looked up to Lana, all the detectives wanted to be like her. Really? Oh yes, myself included. I was a fool, really. She hated anything crooked and always watched out for the other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall. When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would have ever recovered from his shock. That's what makes it all the more infuriating. Miss Starr. That's why I'll never be able to forgive her. Why'd she have to turn so cold after that? Okay, but about this whole being used thing. Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? Yes, thanks to Chief Gant's powerful influence. Chief? That's right. Having solved the SO9 case, his position as Chief was secured. There was only one thing left for him to control, and then no one could stand in his way. The prosecutor's office. What? You mean, that's why Lana was transferred? If he could control the chief prosecutor, he could control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. But, but how could he control Lana? I don't know, but one thing's for sure. Ever since that case ended, she's never been the same. It's only logical to conclude. There must have been a reason for her change. At last, I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss Star. You listen to me, rookie. It takes more than just ingredients to create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better chef than I've been. Oh, I've already secured that because you're kind of, I mean, you're a line cook where I'm a sous chef, okay? Yes, I went there. Let me get the hell up out of here because I'm tired of seeing her face. In the words of Mr. Ford from Frisky Dingo, wait, crap, I already forgot his quote. This is messed up. Okay, yeah. Like, all right, I'm tired of looking at you. Get the fuck out of my office. All right, so, um, where are we going again? Oh yeah, the uh, police department. That's right. I did not. I do not want to examine the monstrosity that is the blue badger. 
with a bandaged head. No, we're going to criminal affairs. Oh my god, really? Oh, you're back. You're still here? I gotta make 150 copies of these files. Brewing coffee, copying files, turn into a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well? I'm not mistaken, I think he means desk jockey. I've never heard that one before. Oh, that DJ. You gotta admire your persistency, my answer still no. I'm not letting you in the chief's office. Chief's office, chief's office, period. It'd be my neck on the line. The office is the last crime scene in the SL9 incident. I have to take a look in there. There's gotta be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. All right then, let's show him what his boyfriend, I mean best friend, is thinking about doing. What's that scrambled up piece of paper? N no way! Mr. Edgeworth can't be serious. Is he ever not serious? I can't believe they've pushed him this far. Mr. Edgeworth really feels responsible. At first, I thought he was as cold as ice. But now I know different. He trusted us detectives to provide him with sound evidence. We just... They betrayed him. Detective? That's it. I've made up my mind. But... Here, take my ID card. We can't do that if someone found out. They wouldn't let you off the hook with another lost item report. Look at me. It's no secret I'm already out of the loop. For all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, I may already be as good as terminated. What? So at least let me do this, for Mr. Edgeworth's sake. All right, detective. Thank you. Don't use ID tucked swiftly into your pocket. Police department ID card allows access to areas of the PD open to detectives. Detective Gumshoe isn't very photogenic, is he? Whatever you do, just don't say that to his face. Look at his eyes. Are, look, his eyes are half shut, and his mouth is half open. Hey, each of his shirt buttons is off a notch, and he's got the narrow end of his tie in front. I think this goes beyond being a photogenic issue. That's kind of sad. That is kind of sad. And then, yeah, you know, the info on the back, if found, please report back to the police department. And Okay, so... We now have a detective's ID card, and next time, I'm going to go to the chief's office and see what we can see. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day, and see you next time for some more Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Goodbye.